Aloha, this is ITS-128, and it is uh, uh, October 29th, and let me share my screen. And just take a peek at La Lima here. Oh, I have La Lima up here. We go. Uh, uh, oops. Oh, here we go. And uh, 128. And so we are in, uh, we're at uh, Thursday of week 10, I guess. And so we're going to uh, finish up chapter six. No, no. we're going to finish covering the text of chapter six. So next week we can focus completely on the labs. And last time we got as far as, um, let's see if we look here, we can see how far. Uh, we covered 6.4 through 6.7 almost. Uh, let me open my uh, chat here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so if we take a look at... Um, We take a look, oh, what am I, oh, yeah, here we go. Take a look at chapter seven. I think we got is okay, I remember covering this problem here. And uh, I think we, I don't think we did these challenge activities. Uh, let's see, we are, this is um, branches inside loops. Okay, let me take a look at my um, notes here and I'm gonna put, these notes here, and I don't need this anymore. Okay, this one is okay. So let's just try this. Uh, I'll put the functions of branches with branches slash loops. Okay, so this thing um, it it defines a defines a message or defines a function called print message, and if that if the message that comes in as a para as a parameter as the length is greater than seven, it just displays out the words too long. Otherwise, it print it displays out the message. So the first time it it uh, it executes, it sends in this argument, and that's not too long, so it prints it out, and then uh, yeah, so it prints it out, and then the next time it sends this in there and it ends up saying that it's too long. So if we, so I'll do one. I wanna to try to get through all the uh, sections today and then at the end I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna talk about one of the previous problems we had. Uh, so this one is, uh, uh, if the length is greater than eight, it does that. Okay, so you're, so if you call this function with like this, this is gonna be, uh, this is greater than eight. The length of the string is greater than eight, so it's going to print too long, like that. And then it calls this, it calls print message again, and the length is only one, two, three, four. So it, the else case is taken, so then it's just going to print it out, like this. Okay. And so that's probably. The right answer. Okay, you can look at the rest of them. Okay, here define a function called print popcorn time uh, with the parameter bag ounces. <clears throat> and the idea is if the bag ounces is less than three, it says too small. If it's greater than 10, it says it's too large. Otherwise, uh, it computes six times bag ounces and then it, it computes and then prints whatever six times bag ounces is followed by the word seconds uh, end with a new line okay so this is going to simply be a uh, function no def wrong language def uh print popcorn time and there's a it's going to be a parameter and we can call it bo ounces 
inside here. Doesn't matter what we call it inside. Just have to be consistent. And what I can say if um, uh, if uh, ounces is less than three, then I gotta print um, too small. L L if ounces ounces is um, I'm going to take care of the greater than 10 case second because it's easier. If it's greater than 10. I want to print uh, print too large. Yeah. And uh, else uh, compute um, bag ounces followed by seconds. I'm going to just say S equals six times bag ounces. And then I'm going to say print um, S comma seconds. Uh, that, that, I hope this Sorry, this should be this. Stupid, stupid. Okay, that probably works. Now, I, I think you can also, um, let's say we just wanted to cover it in order. We wanted to say less than three, uh, you know, between three and six. So I think we, can, we would go less than three. If ounces is um, three, greater than or equal to ounces, greater than or equal to 10, we would say, we would do this part. Uh, so, so I can do, put this down here, and put this up here and here. You see, this does the same thing. If it's less than three, it does this. If it's between three and ten, it does this, uh, uh, and then if it's and then if it's not any of those, it must mean it's greater than ten. So then it prints too large. Let's see if this works. Yes, great. So, you know, there's many ways we can get to the same thing. All right, uh, function. Oh, okay. So now we're going to create a function with a loop, and uh, if the function um, uh, we're going to write a function called shampoo instructions, and the the parameter is going to be num cycles, and if and you're going to they're going to read in, going to read in the number of cycles, and that that the user enters, and then we're going to pass that uh, argument into the function. So let's write the function def shampoo instructions. And I'm inside, let's call it what they call it, num cycles. You can call it anything, just as long as you're consistent. And we would say um, if uh, num cycles is less than one, then you print out too few. Uh, and then we, we can just do this in order. Elif um, num cycles is greater than four, greater than four, then it's, um, you print too many. Uh, else, okay, now we have to have a loop because uh, uh, where n is the cycle number. Okay, so so now if we have to print out, uh, like let's say the guy enters, uh, so so the legal things they can enter is two, no, one, two, and three, uh, one, two, three, and four. So valid, so 
So this can be, and I'm just going to put a comment here. I think I can do this. Uh, it's going to be um, one or two or three or four. Okay, so because if it's less than one, it, this, it does this. If it's greater than four, it does this. Otherwise, it's going to do this. And so we want to have a loop. Let's say it's two. We want to... Um, we want to print out something that looks like this. Okay, so if the guy enters in a two, we want to say one lather and rinse, two lather and rinse, and then we're done. But if the person types in one, we would just output one lather and rinse. The person types in four, it'll be, it will be four of them here. A five, it would say too many, and if it was minus one or zero, it'd say too few. So we're just going to have a loop here, and the loop is going to be, um, if it's, it's going to have to at least be one. So, um, so four, four, um, four, uh, oh, I guess it doesn't, yeah, well, well, you can use a for loop or a while loop. A while loop might be, might be more clear because we're going to go one, two, uh, we'll start at zero. Okay, so, so I'm going to start out as cycle, I'm going to say cycle equals one. And then I'm going to say while cycle is less than or equal to num cycles, then do this print uh, a C. I, I, I could use capital N. I'll tell you, tell you what, why don't I use capital N just so it's more clear? Capital N while C, while N is less than or equal to num cycles print out um oh got to we gotta uh print out that colon thing well we don't necessarily i i i notice in the solution here there they don't worry about oh no there is a space okay the space here okay good space there. Okay, there's actually spaces there. So uh, first print n, and then print um, uh, lather and rinse. Uh, and then we got to make sure we increment n. n plus 1. Um, now this is not gonna, oh yes, because, okay, so, okay, so, so, so let's say that they enter in two. Okay, so it's gonna come down here and, and N is gonna be equal one and this is gonna equal two. So the first time N is equal to one, so it's gonna print this out, it's gonna add one, come back around, it's two. Uh, n is le less than or equal to 2. Uh, 2 is less than or equal to 2. So then it prints this again, and then it increments by 1, and then it comes back around, and n is equal to 3 at that time, and num cycles is 2, and so then it'll stop. And it's got to print done somewhere. So maybe it prints done after the while loop is done. Oops, got to do this. Print done. Period, yes. Okay, this probably will work. Let's see. What did I do wrong? Oh, haha, <laughs> should be lowercase r. And I printed out uppercase r. <clears throat> well, anyway, you can fix that. Uh, let's, let's go on. I wanna try to buzz through these right here. Uh, 3.30 only. Okay, so functions are objects. Okay, so um, all this means 
is that an object is just a uh, is is like a variable. It's like a we're going to learn about classes and objects and uh, making instances of classes classes which we would call objects in general. Um, right now, the objects that we've we've only been dealing with are just variables. Uh, variables, a, a, a variable single a scalar variable like like y is just a single thing that can hold one value and you can change the value of it. Um, um, and then we have lists and sets and a list is a single, it's an object and um, uh, it happens to be, uh, you, you can add to it and change change stuff uh, and then sets and so on. So so each one of those things is an, is an object. Well, and, uh -oh, and, and you can pass objects in, uh, when you're writing functions, you can pass an, an object as an argument and the function can accept that object as a parameter and then do stuff with it or do stuff to it sometimes. Uh, and then it can it and then it can also pass back a value and the value is actually an object. So so everything is an object. Uh, functions can be objects also, which means you can pass a function into a function. Uh, so you know, you define a function and, uh, and then you can you define a couple of functions and then you define this other function and, and you can pass, you can pass the, you can pass a function and then the, the function that accepts it as a parameter will, will do something with that, uh, probably operate on some other objects. None of this might have made sense. That's okay. Um, uh, let's, let's go on here. The, uh, the, um, he, in this section here, it sort of kind of tries to explain, uh, kind of gives a rationale or explains to you this whole idea of a function being an object. And really what they're saying is a function is, is like a chunk of code. And um, it's, it's, it's a bunch of code statements and, and that's how we define it with, with a bunch of statements. But then it goes on here in this, this text here, it goes on and sort of explains um, uh, it, this is really unnecessary, this, this section here, but uh, it, it explains uh, sort of how the computer implements functions or how the computer implements programs. Um, as you sus might suspect, the computer, uh, the, the microprocessor does, does not execute um, Python code directly. The, the microprocessor that, that's inside your computer uh, only really understands ones and zeros. And, and when you actually look, look inside of a memory, uh, a computer memory, um, um, all there is in there is ones and zeros. It's just that um, you group together sets of ones and zeros and put in particular places, and that means something. So um, computers can only like basically add, and, and I, you, you probably learned this, you probably learned this in, um, in ICS 101. I think you probably also learned this in the beginning, the very beginning of this, of this, do we learn it in the beginning of uh, computers? and programs. Uh, yeah, computer memory, computers, ones and zeros, just a bunch of ones and zeros like this, okay? And and there's uh, ones, oh, oh, he, oh, here, look, simple processor instructions. Uh, this is the kind of thing that microprocessors understand. These are, you know, this is one microprocessor instruction. This is another microprocessor instruction. And in fact, in fact, it's not even ADD. It's it's like some code, some code of ones and zeros means add, and some codes in ones and zeros are referring to where the X is, and some other codes of ones and zeros are going to be just a value here and so on. Uh, and it's a different set of ones and zeros that, that refer to to multiply. So here we see this example here in the memory. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros, which are which is interpreted by something by the microprocessor. And so uh, you know, really, what's in there is this. Uh, but at the lowest level of programming, 
which is assembly language programming. Uh, it's written like this, but the thing about assembly language programming is there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, the, the uh, program code, or in this case, you can say codes, I guess, in, in the memory and how, how they're interpreted. So, so the programmer actually writes like this and, and through a very simple translation, it gets translated into these ones and zeros. And those ones and zeros are, are what get loaded into the computer and then they're executed. Well, in this chapter that we're doing right now, which is chapter six, uh, we're doing, um, uh, we are in um, Function are. functions are objects. It actually explains it um, in in Python. This is this is why it's so unnecessary. Python, uh, it it actually uh, translates down into what what's called bytecode, and bytecode is kind of a universal intermediate language between the language that the programmer programs in, which in this case is Python, uh, and the language of the microprocessor itself. Okay, and so. Um, uh, um, Oracle or whoever invented Java, jo whoever invented Java came up with with these with a, a, a with this nice intermediate language called bytecode, uh, and um, and uh, so languages can uh, so so uh, when you're implementing a language, um, all you have to do is implement it where you're translating the the lines of the Python program down into bytecode and then something else can can translate the bytecode into the actual machine code so um, for different microprocessors the bytecode translator would be different the bytecode is the same and then the and then on top of the bytecode you have the language that the programmer is actually programming in and and that can be java it can be python and so uh, the, the Python compiler, the Python translator, or the Python interpreter in this case, will take your Python code and it translates it down to bytecode. And then some other vendor will, will take, take um, the bytecode and translate it into whatever kind of microprocessor that your computer uh, uh, ha uh, is using. And um, so, uh, so there's like a, a two-step thing and this here is sort of explaining kind of what bytecode is and you see it's similar it's it's similar it translates very nicely into the microprocessor language but as microprocessors get more advanced or or you may have some other different kind of real primitive microprocessor um uh you uh you, as long you only need to worry uh some the probably the makers of a microprocessor are are going to write the bytecode translator. So it kind of makes it universal. Um, and, and Aaron just asked, is bytecode universal in all program languages? No, it's not um, in many of them, but um, no, there's, uh, uh, it, there, there's, there's still a little bit of inefficiency. Uh, if, you could, if you're translating down to bytecode and then you translate from bytecode in, into, uh, into the language of the microprocessor, there's gonna be a little bit of inefficiency there. The most efficient way is to, is to translate from from Python or whatever language is directly into the microprocessor language, and traditionally that's how uh, most most compilers work. And then you know there's the competitors to Java, and that would be um, Microsoft C Sharp is the direct competitor to Java. Um, they're, they're, they they both address the same market. Uh, they're, they're same kind of restrictions. You know, last time we talked about um, um, dynamic typing and static typing and all it's the, this, the characteristics are the same, but they're, they're competitors and, um, uh, C sharp code translates directly into whatever the Intel microprocessor is and Java translates to bytecode and then bytecode and, 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 you know, like the, uh, so Java is more, more universal. Um, you know, the, the, the microprocessor inside your car is not an Intel 
you know, 86 or whatever Pentium, whatever they're, whatever they are now, uh, microprocessor. It's some other kind of microprocessor that processor that's designed by Samsung or something, or, or the microprocessor inside your phone. It's like a something, a 10 or a 11 or a 12. That's not, uh, that's not, um, you know, Intel. Uh, that's that's Apple's own, and so um, you know you you write a bytecode translator for the tra that will translate any bytecode into the language of the of the of your phone, and then you can write um, you know code for your phone, or they would write code for their phone in any language that they choose, and it translates down to bytecode, and then you know and so on. So anyway, um, so this is not very important. Is my Kind of my point but but what what we're learning what what we do learn here is that you can define a function and uh, you 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 can use the function and then you can say something else is equal to that function and then now you can use that something else just the same as if you were to uh, how you did it before and so what actually goes on here is that first a um see what happens when I do this. So that gets defined. Uh, they get that gets translated into bytecode probably. And then um, this thing executes and I guess um, prints that out. Uh, no, no, when this thing executes, it, it executes this and prints it out and it comes down here and then it's going to set. So this is the next uh, statement to execute. It, it creates this new name called FUNC. And now that is the same as that. And so we, we can use FE, FUNC the same as we use that. All right, so um, you have to recognize here that, you know, it's here when we're setting, we're, we're saying that that this is this is this is going to be a function, uh, and uh, and so you know there's no there's no left and right parentheses here, so it's just it's like it's like this name is now equal to this name, whatever this name is, whatever this var variable is, or whatever this object is. Now this now this object can be referred to it by this name, and then so since this is a function then you can do this. So anyway, so, and here's the point, functions can be passed as arguments, okay? So down here we've got, um, here we, uh, uh, we have a function called print figure. We have a function called print figure. Okay, this, this funny little program will, 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 will print a, a a, a figure. It'll either print something that looks like a monkey or it'll print something that looks like a human. And uh, you notice the body is the same. The body part is the same. Uh, what's the only thing that's different is the head. Okay, so um, we have this, we define this function called print figure. Uh, that's a good, uh, so the, you, you've, the, how many types of code languages use pipe? Bytecode, byte that's a good Google question. You can, you can Google that question. Uh, quite a few, though, I'd say. And, you know, people are inventing languages all the time. I mean, I, um, uh, in my, when I was an engineer back in Minnesota, um, I, I developed two or three languages. Um, uh, since, since I came to Hawaii, I, I cr created a language called, um, Called action tags and so on, but and and so it's, it's, translation is is kind of a fun thing. It's once you do it once, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And um, anyway, um, so 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 we have this. We create this function called print figure, and as a parameter, it's gonna it's gonna take in another function, a smaller function, as a parameter. And so the first thing, and and so this is a function. You notice it doesn't have the parentheses around it. Uh, uh, here, here is here is when we call it. We're either going to call it with um, with the monkey head function. This is this is the monkey head function, and this is the 
Uh, this is the human head function. So two different functions. They each print a head, a different head. And um, uh, this is going to call the print figure function using a monkey head. And this is going to call the print figure function using a human head. So we're passing a function name. And so when this thing comes along, it's going to take the function name and inside this little inside this we're just going to refer to it as face you know it's going to be a face monkey face or a human face or a human head or whatever uh, so then the first thing we do is we print out we we execute face and when we execute it we put the, the left and right parentheses so we execute the face and so it's either going to do this face or this face depending on what this is which is dependent on how it's whether whether we're calling it with this or, or with this. And then after it prints the face, it's going to print the rest of the body. And so in this little program, we say, you know, enter one to draw a monkey, enter two to draw a human, to, to uh, draw a human. So choice is going to take on the value of either one or two. And if choice is one, it's going to print the monkey. If choice is two, it's going to print the human. <clears throat> functions are compiled into bytecode when the function definition is evaluated by the interpreter. Yes, it's true. The output of the following program. The output of the following program is meow, and we're supposed to say whether it's true or false. Okay, so, so we have defined a function called cat, and we've defined another function called pig and then then what we do is we we take this um the the name cat and we set it equal to the same object as pig okay so so this actually so so actually cat is no longer this cat is now this so then when you execute this it's gonna it, it's gonna execute the, this function because this is equal to this. So the answer is false because it doesn't print me out. It prints oink. See, because cat is equal to pig, it reassigns the pig function object to the variable cat. Um, <clears throat> Okay, now in this one here, we have a function uh, called this, called myfunc1, and we have another one called myfunc2. And here we're actually adding the functions together themselves. We're, we're not adding the evaluation of the function. We're adding the object function. Remember, uh, the object function is, is some bytecode, it's a bunch of bytecode. Uh, it, whereas, whereas if we do something like if we actually execute this thing, we are actually causing the bytecode to execute, and it's going to result in a. If, if there's a return statement, it's going to result in an actual value. Uh, so, if this here, if this had left and right parentheses, and this had here had left and right parentheses, then we would be adding together whatever those functions evaluated to. Uh, you know, they would execute and spit out a value and then you'd be adding those two. But we're not doing that. We're adding the actual bytecode uh, uh, plus this bytecode. Uh, does that mean we're concatenating him? And, you know, they aren't numbers anymore. It's a chunk of a little code. So uh, this doesn't really make sense because because plus uh, it's, it's likely not defined. And so this is going to be, um, it doesn't return a value valid value because because uh, adding the objects you know the 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 uh, the plus operator is not defined for adding two objects together the plus operator is defined for adding two numbers together and the plus operator is defined for adding two strings together but not not for adding two actual functions together all right and but this but this will work because this thing here, is going to 
execute and evaluate to some to some value and then you're taking that value and that is a argument now to what to this function so this uh passes okay so the expression that passes the my func to function object as an argument no no it's this is not this statement is is false because it is not passing the function object it's passing whatever that function evaluates to you know it, it, it you're, you're passing your your this thing this thing will first execute and then be replaced by some value like a number maybe and then that is used as an argument to uh for this to execute so this one is also false because it's not passing a function object it's passing a fu it's it, it's passing uh the value after the after this is executed hope that made sense all right let me it's uh, common errors All right, a common error is, uh, you know, when you're copy, copy pasting stuff, you know, it's like, you, like, you know, you, you're gonna say, oh, uh, I've got the Celsius to Fahrenheit function and I wanna create a Fahrenheit to Celsius function. So you, so you just take this and you copy it and you paste it over here and then you go through and you change the stuff and sometimes you forget to change everything and you end up, uh, you know, if there's an error in your function. And in this case, you know, you copy it over and you change the name and you change the, the uh, parameter, you change the temperature equation here, you calculate Celsius, it's this, and you got all that right, but then you forget to change what is returned. Duh. All right, so be careful of that. Okay, another error can be like you write this whole function and you forget to put the return statement. Okay, so you execute the function, it doesn't return anything. It's gonna return a non, a non value. And that's because you didn't, you didn't put in a return statement or you could have put in a return statement, but somehow you have multiple return statements and, and it executed on a path that didn't, that didn't uh, have a return statement at the end of it. So that's that. Um, so here, here we're just being asked to create the the uh, the new function, so you know they're they're telling us okay, so we got this. We have the Celsius to Kelvin function already, and we're supposed to write a, a, a Kelvin to Celsius function. So you can put that here. It ends up being like similar to this probably. Kelvin. Oh, but this is Kelvin. All right, so so you can do that. Just make sure you you uh, when you do copy paste, make sure you fix everything and fix the return statement at the end. Okay, so so now we're going to talk about scope, scope of variables, and and this is all kind of obvious stuff, but uh, just got to reinforce. Uh, um, so so Aaron asks, in what circumstances do you use a return? Well, you always use a return if your function, if you want your function to actually return a value. So if your function, uh, um, if you're using the function inside of an expression, then it's got to return a value. And if it's ever on the right side of an assignment statement, you're using it as an expression or use, you're using it as part of expression. So, so it has to return a value. Let me see if I can find a quick example here. Well, uh, here, here we expect this to, to translate into a value. So we expect to have a value there. So this function better have a return statement. Uh, whereas if you have something else, um, here, uh, here, this is a function, but, but it's not, on the right side of an assignment statement it's it's not something equal it's it's not it's not inside of an expression it's just sitting there all by itself so if it's sitting there all by itself 
it doesn't really make sense to return a value because where does the value go? You're not printing it. It just like a value gets put here, but it's, you know, it, that, that doesn't make any sense. So, so here, here, this function just does something. In fact, it prints out some stuff. So, so you, this one would not have a return statement, but, but in here, see here, you're just, okay, this one, this one better return a value because we're going to use it to, and that, that, that's what nums is going to be. Is that what, yeah, see, get numbers actually has to have a return because you want to be able to replace this with a um, uh, uh, some values. You, you, you want this to translate into some value and then that, that gets stored into nums. Whereas this is just all by itself and it does something. This is all by itself and it does something. And this is all by itself and it does something. And see, so that's why the, those would not have a return statement. I mean, it does something, but it's not, it's not returning any value to be put, put any place. So that's a good test. Common errors. Scope. Okay, scope is, um, um, uh, when you start using a variable, um, um, what is the scope of that variable? Um, 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 when can you use that variable and when do we not know what that variable is? It's, when is it not defined? Well, anything that's, that's defined, that start, where you start using it outside of any functions, uh, this variable is gonna be visible uh, you know, when you're outside any functions, okay? Um, this variable here, total inches, we only see that inside this, fu this, this function. We only see that inside this function. So that's the, only, that's the only place it makes sense. If we try to use total inches outside here, it's, it's not defined out here. It's because it's, 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 it's uh, internal to this function. And so um, this variable and this variable uh, are said to be a uh, local scope. It's local to the function. And these are uh, global. These are said to be global scoped variables. Now, you, um, it turns out that uh, global scoped variables are actually visible inside a local function, but you can't change it. You can't change it. You can only see it. So you can use it in an expression, but you can't assign a value to it. You can't assign a value to it unless you declare it like you're going to assign a value to it. So here in this example, for example, um, we have a we we start using this variable called employee name, and we set it equal to something, and then we go in here. We uh, then inside this function, which by the way, the only time the only time this this executes is when it's called, and here's where it's called. Okay, so so when this is called, then this thing executes, and when it executes. Uh, we declare uh, this employee name variable is, is global. And so then we can actually change it. So by changing it, we have it, it's going to be on the left side of an equal sign. So here we, uh, we say that this employee name is, is, is global, is a global variable, but we're going to want to change it. So we put this statement in there and then we read in and ask for some name and then we assign that some name. So in this example over here, when this thing executes, uh, the employee name is going to change because it gets changed in here. And, and so lo and behold, when we execute this print statement, uh, it's, it's the new employee name. Whereas in this example over here, we assign employee name something, 
we execute the we execute it and this thing executes and we try to assign this newly read in name we try to write that into here but it's not going to work because when when this code executes it sees this and it's not global it's not defined as global so so it must mean oh they they this guy wants to uh, start using a new variable called employee name. Oh, look, it's the same name as that outside one, but they're different because because if they were the same, it would, it would say global. Uh, so they're different. So then this thing gets assigned the new name, but when it, we come back out again, it's lost. When a function is done executing, all the local variables are just, they're, they're lost. They're, they're actually given back to the system and that memory space can be used you know, by somebody else. So, so in this example, you know, you define employee name as something, uh, you execute this, this function, it, it asks for a new one here, uh, asks in the user types in Ro Romeo Montague of Romeo and Juliet. But then when it, we come back out here, uh, you know, it, the employee name is still what it was out, out here. Whereas in this case, uh, we use this global thing and it, actually changes. So that's scope there. And we also go on to say that, um, oh, where do we see the colon, the colon thing? Yeah, that's true. Okay, now I guess, um, okay. Uh, so that's a scope is there's actually a third scope. There's a system scope. Yeah, so um, there's some sort of uh, idiosyncrasy idiosyncrasies with uh, this, this, uh, but, uh, but we don't need to get into that now. Let's, um, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, um, namespaces. Okay, so uh, we're still talking about scope, and we're talking about how how, how we decide what which scope of a variable is in, and uh, and so we have this concept called a namespace. And a namespace is actually um, you know uh, it's it's a list of all the variables. There, there's there's like the global namespace and the local namespace, and local namespaces come and go as functions execute. You know, a function is executed, local namespace is created, it's used, and then when the function's done, it, it, the local namespace goes away. But then if the function is executed again, a new local namespace is created, and then it's, you know, like that. And so um, uh, here, here uh, we have X, Y, and Z, and we've got this, uh, if you execute this thing, you know, this thing executes, and so X goes there, this thing executes, so that goes there. And then, uh, then the x plus y executes and it takes the x, takes the five, takes y, replaces the y with a 100, and then it adds them up and the and z gets, gets stored there. Um, and so um, uh, you can print a namespace by, uh, printing this, this thing, okay? This thing will print out uh, all of the, um, the name, the, the, the name, it'll print out the entire namespace in the form of a dictionary, it's a dictionary. So, um, so here, so there's this initial namespace and so print the initial namespace, well, it's nothing. And then we create a variable and then we, then we go along and we got we start using a new variable called my var and we set it equal to the string. And then we print this, whatever this is. And then we wanna print the globals again. So uh, this, this is this what's printed here. And now uh, the namespace has one variable, it's called my var. And when we print that, this thing comes out. The name of the variable and what its value is. Now here, um, and then we go along and we define this function. It's just a dumb function. It's got a pass, a pass statement in there, which means we're going to uh, address it later. 
And then we print out this again, created a new function. And then now when we print out the globals, there's two of them. There's one, this name is, and it's actually a function. So it looks like it's represented like this. And then the second one is my bar is still there. It's still there and it still has this value. And um, what this is, says it's a function and this looks like an actual memory address. It's like an actual memory address. And so this, the, it's probably the memory, it's the memory address for the byte code. And so the, if you go to this memory location in, in your, if you have the ability to go look at actual specific memory locations in your computer, you go there and you'll see a bunch of ones and zeros, but those ones and zeros will be the, the definition of the my funk function byte code for it. Okay, so um, so there's actually three scopes. Well, there's actually more than that, but because uh, there's there's actually as many scopes as how many how how much you nest your functions, because functions can have functions defined inside, and and those the functions defined inside are local just to that function. So it's possible that you have a main program and you got a, a function, and then inside that function you got a couple more functions that are only used inside that function and then of course you can have more functions inside so you can have you can actually have um you know you can nest as many as you need but so so we talked about global scope it's inside that's outside your that's the main you're in your main program we talked about local scope and that's usually inside of a function and a a, a local scope is created when a fun when a function is called the global scope is created when the, when the program is compiled. When the program starts, the global scope is all there, uh, but there's but none of the local scopes are there. And then when you start executing and, and so on, then the local scopes are created. Yeah. Uh, Built-in scope is is actually like outside your program, and and you know you you have the names of of functions uh, that are built in, like the int function is built in, the str function is built in, the list and so on, range functions, those are all functions. And so they have to, their name someplace. And so that's um, the built-in namespace. So here you might have this thing and uh, so th this is local scope, uh, this is global scope, but then we use an integer function, which these aren't used, I guess. Uh, so that would be the built-in namespace. Um, so you can look at that and we can come back to this next next time if we need to. Uh, if you have questions on it, try to do this. More scoping and namespaces. What does this do now? Let's see. We define define this function and we go down here in the next so we define a function called average and it's it's the function is created and it's it's and then we do uh then we're going to execute this a equals five lo and behold now we have a equals five and then we're going to execute b b equals uh, 10. so now is b equal 10 and then we're going to execute uh, the next statement which is going to take a and b together add them and store them into a variable called temp so there we go. Now it's 50, 50, temp's got 15. And then we're going to execute this print function. And this print function, uh, when it executes, it's going to call the AVG function, which we created up here, which we defined up here. So when we execute this, uh, we, 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 we need to call this AVG function. And so, the, um, so it's uh, AVG with the parameters uh, five and 10, so A and B, A and B is five and 10. So this gets set up and this is what's, what's passed. And now when this thing executes, it actually, um, doesn't do anything. Uh, then this thing actually executes this thing here. And so this temp is created and it's basically takes five plus 10 equals 15 divides it by two, stores that into a new 
a local variable called temp. See, it's it's not the same as this one. It's 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 its own inside here. And then uh, then it returns this temp value. So that means um, this becomes the return value. And so that's going to be replaced. That's going to replace this. So, boom! This thing this thing finishes executing, and we see uh, this thing it prints out. And then the sum gets executed, which is a, which is just, which is this. And the point here is that this temp is different than this temp. So let's get, keep moving here. Um, here we are sending, um, we're sending, um, function arguments and, and mutability. Okay, so there's pass by value and pass by reference, or I guess here we're calling it pass by assignment, uh, pass by, what are the terms? Anyway, well, um, some, sometimes when you're passing, okay, when you're passing something like an object, um, uh, sometimes, you know, the thing you pass in, Sometimes you can change it if it's, as they say, mutable. If it's, if you can mutate it, uh, then then you can change it. And so, if you can mutate it into something else, uh, so some things that you pass in uh, are mutable. Uh, so 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 in other words, if you change them inside the function, it ends up changing them everywhere, or. Uh, they can be immutable. In other words, they can't cannot be mutated. In other words, they cannot be changed. Uh, um, and and so um, the difference is there's immutable and mutable. And the, the difference is if you pass in something that's just a that just ends up being a value and not a list, a, just a single value, then that is not mutable. It cannot be changed. So so you go in here, we, we define this function called birthday age, and, and what birthday age does is it just adds one to what was passed in, okay? So pass in something like seven, we make it eight, that's all. Okay, so, so, so that's, that's the function that's defined, that's all it does, there's no return, so. It, and then here, so here we, we define a variable called Timmy age, and Timmy age is going to equal seven, and then we execute this uh, this this birthday function, and it doesn't return anything. We just passes in Timmy age and does its thing, and then it's done. And then when we come out here and print Timmy age, it's going to be the same as it was. It doesn't change. So if we run this thing, we say that. This thing is defined, and then we execute this, and then we execute this, which comes back up here, and um, you know we come back down. It executes that. So age, so this age, this age, turns into eight, but it doesn't matter because we come back out here again. Timmy is Timmy age is still seven. Okay, so that's an immutable uh, um, reference. Uh, a list, though, you can change it. Okay, it's it's you um, you, you define a list. Uh, you you def and, and then you define a function called modify. Doesn't doesn't pass back any any any. Uh, there's no return statement, so this can sit sit there all by itself. Uh, you pass this in, but my list is mutable. You can mutate it. It's a mutant, uh, and so so in this thing we actually change it. We take the the zero one two the the one the 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 second element. The first one is zero. The second one is one. The third third one is two. We change it to ninety nine. So we change the twenty to ninety nine, and then when we print it out, it's going to print out ten ninety nine thirty, because this thing was actually able to change that middle one. 
so we can see that, I guess. See, there we creates a thing, defines my list is equal to that. Then it executes this modify function here and my list is pointing to the same thing. And then here we change it to 99. It's because it points to the same thing. So this is a reference. So, so we're passing this in, we're passing a reference. We're passing, it's this list changed. You know, this is the list I'm passing you. It doesn't, it doesn't make a copy of a list and pass it in. In this case, in this case up here, we actually make a copy of age. You know, when this thing comes in, it makes a copy of it and it messes around with it. It doesn't mess around with the original thing that was passed in. Whereas this thing does mess around with the original thing that's passed in. It's called by reference, we, we, we say. Now you can pass the whole thing in and say, don't, I'm passing this in and you make a copy of it and do whatever you want with it, but don't mess with my copy on the outside. And the way you do that is you 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 don't you just pass this in. I'm not sure mutable statement is there is that a mutable mutable statement? Is that what it says here? I think objects are are mutable. Quickly look that up. Yeah, I don't, uh, mutable object. So if it can be changed, yeah. Well, it's actually, I guess it's in the context of passing. Can, it can be changed after it's created and a mutable object cannot be. Yeah, so, um, in in Python, when you assign, you have a variable called a, and you assign five to it. You know, then then it creates an object that's got that's five, and then that that's a gets pointed to that a is that object called five. And then when you reass, then when you say, oh, now I want a to be equal to six, it actually creates a new object which is six. And then a does no longer point to that five; it points to the six. And so uh, the that's because the five is is is, not, is immutable, it can't be changed. So you have to create a new one. Whereas if you create a list, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a, a list of, of, of values, you know, in a list form uh, and, and you wanna change it, uh, you actually change the list itself. It's the list is, it's the same list and you're actually changing it. So that's, <coughs> so that's what mutable is. Um, so here's an example of how it does that. And, and, and here we're actually, so in this case, we're actually passing in the list, so we're passing in a copy of the list. So in, in this case, uh, because we're passing in a copy, um, this does not change it. This is gonna stay what it was here because when we called the modify function, we did not pass in the, the list, the, the, a, a reference to our, to our list. We made a copy of it and that's what we gave it to. Uh, let's see, where, I'm gonna see where I am here. Um, we can, uh, you can try, try these challenge activities and then, and then uh, if you have, if you have a, a question, any question at all, you get trouble with any of them, just send me an email and, and I can go over them either if it's a simple question I can just answer your question or I can cover cover them next next week. Okay, here's talking about uh, when you're passing arguments, um, you know, the way we have been doing it is, you know, you have an order, you have this order. And so when you call a function, you pass the arguments in the same order and then they get plug in bling, 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 bling. Well, you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. You can actually say, uh, I want title to be this, and I want publisher to be this, and I want year to be this. And then, then the order doesn't matter. I mean, the names, you have to use the same names up here, uh, but, but you can put them in any order, okay? So that's that might be easier. If you, if you have a lot of, if you're passing a lot of arguments, you, you may want to do it this way instead. And I think all, all languages uh, do this. Um, you can also do um, uh, a combination 
but the positional arguments have to be first. So this is going to be the first one. And then after that, you can mess around, but you cannot have another positional argument after this. It'll, it'll flag it as an error. Uh, there, and you can do default values too. In the function definition itself, you can say, I want a day, month, year, and style. But if you don't pass in a style, I will, I will just assume you mean style equals zero. So then when you call it, okay, he, okay, here we're passing in all four of them. Here we're passing in all four of them. Here we're only passing in the first three. And the last one, it's going to take the default. And of course, um, you know, as in the other case, if it's position, all the positional ones have to be first. And then the, the ones that have defaults, you know, come after that. So you can't, you can't have, have this one have a default, but then these don't, and then you try to pass in that way. It doesn't look good. So like this. And if you want to do this, do it, do it with a list. You got, it, there's this funny thing where um, if, if you, if you're bringing in a list as a, uh, as a parameter, uh, and and it's a list is mutable and you might define an empty list here and then each time you call it the first time you call it you might mess with it but then when you call it again it's not going to start out with an empty list it's going to it's going to continue with where it left off before so that and that's because it can actually store the uh the it's it's mutable so um it's it's got its own place in memory and it's got its own life um, and if you want to get around that, it, it tells you how to do that here. So you're not going to use this stuff very much. Mixing, you can mix them up here a little bit. And you can have arbitra an arbitrary list where um, you're, you're certainly going to pass in meat and bread, uh, but then you're going, to you're going to pass in any number of, of other things. And so, you, you, so this is like an array or a, a list, I guess. And and so you refer to them by by um, uh, their uh, index value. So so here, um, arbitrary number of keyword keyword arguments. Okay, so this is for keyword arguments where you actually define them. Here, um, the first one here. Um, uh, well, we're sandwiches, okay? So um, uh, we're, we're going to pass in bread and meat, and then in this case, we just want mayo on it. In this case, you want bread and wheat. In this case, you want these three things on it. And so, so this is going to be uh, arg of zero, arg of one, arg of two, or in this case, we're using this kind of a for loop, and we're going to do um, um, all of the extras in R in args and so it ends up printing them out here like that. Oh, you're probably not going to use this very often. And you can also print out, um, uh, you can return more than one value. Okay, so in, in this example, uh, we have a function called get grade status or get grade stats and it reads in the student scores and actually what it returns is it returns two values. It returns an average and it returns a standard deviation. And of course, you, as you might expect, the way that works is you got a definition here. You know, you go ahead and you calculate both of them. You calculate the average, you calculate the standard deviation. And when you're done, your return statement just has, has them both there separated by a comma. There's the average, there's the standard deviation. And so when this thing, um, when this thing executes, the first thing that comes back is this mean, which is average. And the second thing that comes back is standard deviation. So this thing gets plunked there. This thing gets plunked there. And then you can print them out like that. Uh, and um, this is uh, here, if you have really fancy functions and you want to have some kind of documentation, uh, you can actually uh, define this help parameter string thing um, uh, you can use it like, um, you know, I'm going to go into Python. I can type help uh, int 
you know, they, they, the basic, uh, the built-in functions have, have it already in there. So if I want to have help, want help with int, I can get help with int, see? That's uh, also the documentation on, on the int function. Um, if I want to like import math, and then I want to get help with math, uh, there's that. See, so got all the helps. And so um, you can do this with functions that you define. You know, big deal. Okay. I've never used that. And I think this is the only language I know that has this kind of thing. All right, um, exit. Uh, all right, so so I want to. I only have five minutes left. I, oh, and then and then, um, I may you 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 may be interested in some of these engineering examples if you're an engineer. If you if you want to go into engineering, which you can do, um, and then after that it's it, it's the labs. So um, uh, somebody asked me about a five point ten. I didn't have an, I didn't have enough time to uh, go through this as elaborately as I wanted to. But if we go to five point ten, oh, not that one. It's a the uh, it's a it's a um, challenge question. Five point ten. <clears throat> point one point. Here we go. Okay, so um, the in in this problem, we're supposed to write a program which reads in two strings, reads in two strings, and then it starts comparing them. Um, uh, it compares this one with this. It compares the first characters of each. If it's the same, you get a point, and then it goes on to the next one, checks the second characters of each. If, it, if they're the same, you get a point. Does the third one, checks the third character of each. If they're the same, you get a point. Fourth one, fourth character of each, it's the same, you get a point. Fifth one, uh, it's different. The fifth one, in this one, it's an R, and in this one, it's another B. So we're done. The highest the guy got was a four, okay? And so um, in, in, this, in this little pro program, we're supposed to write a program that reads in the two strings and starts with the with the first one, checks, checks, check, keeps on going all the way. If it keeps on getting a match, it keeps on going until it reaches the end. Uh, it shall reaches the end of one or the other, or, or both, if they're the same size. Um, or if it's going along and, it, and it, the first time it, it, it doesn't match, then it's done. And then it outputs, you know, how far you got. So, um, so, so with this one, um, we don't need, we don't need an, uh, an outer loop or an inner loop, we just need one loop. And, and um, we're going to go through uh, the, the, the length of the loop, the maximum length of the loop is really going to be uh, the length of the shortest string, because we're, we're matching one character at a time. And um, uh, we're, we're only going to, uh, and, and we don't have to go past the, uh, 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 once we hit the end of one string, then we know we're done because there's no more, there's no more characters to match in, in that string. So I'm going to open up a whiteboard here and I'm just going to start writing some code here. Okay. So, so the first thing I want to do, and, and what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put a bunch of print statements in here uh, to see where we are all the time. Okay, and uh, and so in my test, in my test code, I'm not going to uh, use this. Uh, something looks like this. I'm going to make something that looks more easy for me to track. To track. So, uh, oops. Uh, so so if I go, let me get a pencil here. Okay, so 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 let's start with a string um, a. The first string is a b c uh, x y z, and I've got another string uh, a b 
um, L, M, like that. Okay, how about that? So, so I've got two strings and this one is six long and this one is four long, okay? Now, um, so, so I'm gonna start testing. I'll, I'll, I'll test this, the first two, I'll test these two, then I'll test these two and I'll test these two. And when I, once I get there, I should stop because I, cause I'm all done. Cause, cause I don't get a match with that one. So I, I don't need to go any farther. Uh, uh, or if instead, um, if instead this was a C and this was an X, if this is a C and this is an X, I meant this, that meant that to be a C. Oh, that's right. It doesn't. How do I, how do I erase that? I go like this. C. A, B, uh, X, Y, and then I've got A, B, X. Let's say that's what it is. There's four in this one, and there's three in this one. <clears throat> and I only have to go up to three because once I've done the first three, there's no more left, so I know I'm done. So, so, so really, uh, my loop, and and it's only it's only three. It's not you know it's not um, it's, it, it's not like I gotta test first this one with this this and this and then this one with this this. It's it's, it's not that. It's just this with this and then this with this and then this with this and then then we're done because there's no more. So um, so the the minimum length. The minimum length is going to be three. So, so really, we've got a Simon pattern over here, and we've got a user pattern. And they come in, and the first thing I, I need to do is just figure out what the smallest one is. So that's going to be the range of the loop. So I'm going to call it a loop range. The loop range is equal to the minimum, minimum of the length of the first one and the second one. The length of the second one. The length of the, length of the second one. <clears throat> oh, got to close this length. All right, <laughs> see that? This is the length of the first one, and this is the length of the second one, and it's going to return the minimum of them. So let's um, let's just print that out. Print. Uh, I'm going to say loop range uh, equals uh, what it is. So that way I can see what it is. Okay. Uh, let me just. Um, can I? Do I get an output when I run this? Let's see what happens when I run it. Ah, oh, forget it. I guess I can't do temporary stuff. Bear with me here. Copy, paste, save. Let me run it now. Uh, CLS um, Python test.py. Did I save it first? Run it and asks me for one. Uh, and I'm going to do this uh, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and A, B, C, X. Okay, so the loop range is going to be four because uh, that's all the farther we need to go. Okay, so that works. Uh, and and then I want to so so now that I have my loop range, I'm going to do uh, four 
position, I'll use P for position, for position in the range of loop range, loop range, okay? And so that's gonna be, um, uh, so let me just um, print, uh, and the way, oh, okay, let me just do, do this. Um, so the first, this assignment, assignment character, um, so I'm gonna use a character. So I'm gonna say uh, S is gonna be the Simon character is equal to, in the first, it's gonna be a Simon pattern. And I can do this, P. Okay, so this is gonna be the character. P is gonna go zero, one, two, three. And so the first one's gonna be Simon pattern of zero, Simon pattern of one, and, and then this, and I'm gonna do user is equal to user pattern of P. And let me print, print uh, U and P, uh, P and S and, and let's just see what this looks like. So I gotta do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and A, B, C, X. So, um, so this is uh, S, the first S, this is the second S, this is the third S, and this is the fourth S. Uh, and we only go to four, so, four, so, uh, so we don't need to go any farther because that's all. And then of course, this is the same. So, so these, these all look like they're equal. So, um, so we actually have all we need right now. So we can just say, um, if S equals U, uh, add two to, user score, add one to it, okay? That might be all we need. Uh, a, B, C, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, X. And we see, <clears throat> what did I do wrong? Let's see, what did I? User score, user score. Huh. What is the name command? P. This equals U. Add one to user score. I'm all done. Print it out. It didn't work. print them and I compare them. What's, um, did anybody, uh, can anybody see what I did wrong? print out S and U, and if they're equal, I don't understand, if S equals U, then add one to user score. Hmm. Well, I, did I, I must have forgot to save it. Okay. I must have forgot to save it. Anyway, so so this is right. Okay, so um so what I tried to show you here is is in in everything you do, you can always just throw in a bunch of um throw in a bunch of uh, uh print statements. And then afterwards you're gonna have to take the print statements out. But but in in, in a way here, like if if this was any more complicated, um, I want 
I might want to do something like, uh, because this is inside this for loop, I, maybe I'm going to do this just to, just to emphasize that it's indented here. Where here, here, this is on the outside. This is, this is internal. And, um, and then this is back on the outside. So it looks, uh, it looks more. Um, so let's try these two things. Try this one. And then try this one as a second one. And we see, is that the right answer? Eight, that was four, should be four. What am I doing wrong now? Um, Mr. Halverson, yes. um, the syntax error I'm getting is for line eight for P in the range. It doesn't like the P or the range for the Zybooks. Um, uh, all right, so you, so you type this into this, is that what you did? Yes. Yeah, I put it all in and it just keeps saying, uh, syntax error, invalid syntax for line eight. Okay, let me, um. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just, I don't know how to do this like you do. No, no, I no, very good. I, okay, so uh, I'm replacing, okay, I'm replacing this solution inside here with this. So like this, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. For definitely, I don't. I don't want um, this here. I I don't want any of these print statements in here. That's. The thing. Okay. But um. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting eight instead of. Four. That is so weird. It's it's like this thing is executing twice. One, two, three, four. It's like it's why would it be executing? Oh, oh, I know why. Because when I hit when I hit something that doesn't match, I should exit. I should exit. So this here I keep on going. So this is uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's why I get the eight. So so once I um once I get something that's not a match, else uh else so the first time i don't get a match then i want to exit the loop is that how i exit uh break there okay okay so, thank you very good okay it is uh 445 thank